Hey guys, we'll give it about, I don't know, a minute or so here so people catch up. But what we're making, when you make a die, I know a lot of you guys see our dies and then think, well, why can't we use a male die and a female die together in this press instead of using urethane? And it is possible to do it. But you can't. You have to do it in a certain way that you're not going to ruin your female dye. So I've come up with some ways to do it, and uh, I've thought about that. Actually, I came up with this years ago. I've actually known about it forever. Not that I'm trying to hold out on you guys, but sometimes offering solutions creates more problems. But I figure a lot of you guys are up to speed now on how this stuff works, so it's probably time to move everybody to the next level. Maybe. We'll see. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what this is, this is called a force. And uh, the die, your die makes the force. You don't, this isn't carved individually. So a, ma a master, I mean, I'll go through this real quick, just so that everyone's on the same page. This is a master. This was a this is an original carving right here. So you can see this is just a big block of steel with the image on it. This, if you ever wondered what came first, the chicken or the egg, well in the case of the die, the hub came first. Usually, I mean, unless you call the your die the master die, but this is the hub. So this was carved in the mail directly like this. Now, this is driven into a block of steel to create a die. Now, what you need is a way to get your metal into the die. So the way we do it is urethane, lead, pewter, whatever you got, paper, garbage. But there's a more elegant method but it requires a little more skill and I didn't want to introduce that until people you know get their feet under them and it sounds like a lot of you guys have, I've been seeing your work and it's coming out really nice so we can move along to the next level so what it's what we're gonna do it's called raising a force so the way you raise a force is you drive a softer metal into your die I you can use copper to create a copper force, you could use brass, bronze, um, aluminum. That's what I'm using today is a piece of aluminum. And I'm just going to press it cold into a block of steel, one of my steel dies. So let's do it. That's how you notice how there's no, everyone's like when they see these kind of dies, they go, there's no mail. Well, you're supposed to make it. <laughs> you make one every time you run this die you make a new force they didn't really I'll show you what they look like I got a few sitting here on the shelf come over here there's a bunch over here these are all these are forces see that little X on the back that holds itself into these were struck hot so this is a force they're thin they're disposable. These were thrown away. After the end of the job, after they ran that die and did the stamping, they just would take a hammer, chisel this off, and throw it in a bucket and throw these away. And now here's another one. Pretty, huh? But they're not, you can't really use them as hubs. I do in a pinch, though. Sometimes when we see something really beautiful, a lot of forces aren't that pretty, though. Like this one's kind of shitty. Excuse my language. It's kind of messy. It's not that great. This one, they did a nice job. So I could potentially, you know, I know how to raise a new master hub from this and make a new hub. And we do it in a pinch so that we can, you know, share some of this stuff with you guys. So here's, a, here's some quick ones I did. There she is. In steel, done hot, struck. Just raised a mass, raised a new force. So let's, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how to raise a force. 
on this side. On this side, right here. See it? So here we go. What you're gonna do, I'm using little chopped up pieces of aluminum rod. There's nothing fancy about this. These are just pieces of aluminum rod. I cut them to kind of fit in here. Just gonna press it in sideways like that. So all we do, put it in the press and we're gonna mush it. Get it kind of centered. Actually get it very centered. <laughs> So this thing doesn't fly out and hit you in the face. Looks pretty easy. So now that that's in there, but still it's not fully done. The metal got hard. So it's really hard right now. So what I need to do is I need to anneal it. Just like you anneal your silver. Hey, look. So our force isn't complete. Notice how it doesn't look very good yet. It's not full there and the edges aren't done. So what you do, you can anneal aluminum. It doesn't anneal. It's very similar to annealing copper or brass, but you gotta be sure you don't overheat it. They're saying what kind of aluminum, where do you buy aluminum rod and what gauge is that? I don't know, it's like half inch rod, um, three eighths rod. Right. I, I may do something. I have a bucket of it that I thought about selling to you guys. Like, I mean, we're talking pennies here. Not, I wasn't trying to like make a profit off it. I just wanted to help. Yeah, but, we're not. We're not doing it today. Yes, Don't go looking for it today. today. We're leaving as soon as yeah, this I'm video is done. <laughs> but let me. I just wanted to show you guys how to do this. So what you're gonna do is you're just. You do not need a big ass torch like this. This just happens to be what I have. I'm going to anneal this, but we're not going to use a lot of oxygen, just a little bit. Because aluminum will turn into a puddle and you don't want to press it when it's super hot because it's, it'll get brittle. So I've just got a little flame like that. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my aluminum to just kind of turn white. If you use copper, it's easier. So if anyone wants to run out and buy some copper rod, um, you can get it. Just get some copper rod. Copper is easier than brass. Brass tends to crack. I would definitely use copper. So once it turns all black and sooty like that, once the soot burns off, then you know you're done. See, it's starting to burn off. That's kind of how you know you're you're cooked your aluminum to the right temperature. That's good. Next thing, don't don't quench it. Not quench it. You stay right there. I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna pick this up with my bare hands. Even though you guys would be at a kick out of it, I'm sure. I'm just going to put this in here. It's still pretty warm. As a matter of fact, it's very warm. And I'm going to get it back in position. If you have copper, feel free to quench it. It won't matter. See, it's swollen up because it's hot. But let's go ahead and press it. And it'll press in again. Even though it stalled out at the last time, it'll press in again this time. Did you see it just bulge out? So there's my force. Check out all the detail. Pretty cool, huh? If your phone could focus, hold on. It doesn't want to focus. There, it sort of focuses. Okay. Yeah. So there it is. There's all your detail. And what you can do now is use this as a force to press your metal in. 
But before you go and jam this, the beauty of this is you're never going to hurt your die. If you make steel top and bottom dies, if you misalign them, you're going to destroy both the force and the die. If you misalign an aluminum force with your steel die, you're just going to wreck your aluminum force. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. But Ann Delgadio said that uh, Vincent wasn't rolling aluminum anymore because it was damaging his uh, rolls. Right. But they're different. That's okay. different. You're not going to hurt these dies because he's rolling aluminum to produce pattern, which isn't good for your rolls. But you're not going to hurt these. It's, you're just making a force. This stuff is soft. And you've got copper in between it or silver in between it. Oh, right. So you're not really touching it. It's just making it that one time. You're fine. So these will lock right in. So what you would do, you'd still use your urethane to get it started. Take a little piece of urethane, press it in. That way it gives you something to register your force with. This will be so that you can get the last of your detail in you know in your final pressings because sometimes it's hard to get the last bits of it with the urethane but with a uh, aluminum force you're going to get all your detail it's really going to help and let's see any other tips i need you could use copper too honestly just use copper it's simple you guys are used to it um and it's fine aluminum's fine too it's cheap real cheap and it comes in different sizes this is like uh, Five eighths rod. Uh, let me do it again. Let's pick a different die. I don't really have any more random dies laying around. <laughs> yeah, they're all packed. They're, they're all gone. <laughs> I literally went through this shop and just cleared the deck. We got rid of everything. Here, let's do let's do something a little different. Now, your more detailed stuff, it'll help if you preform the front so if you if you were going to try to make it uh well let's see if we can do it let's let's do something a lot more difficult let's do yeah, that one's not difficult enough let me find something challenging there we go look at that face that would be tough so let me show you how we're going to do that. If you just try to jam that in there like that, you're not going to get anything. It's like, I think the term is trying to put 10 gallons of crap in a five gallon bucket. Well, that's what you're doing here. You need to shape the front of this like a bullet. So let's go over to our belt sander and we're going to shape the front of this like a bullet. I do it on a lathe, but I know you guys don't have lathes. So let's go do it on the belt sander, and I'm going to burn my fingers. You could do it with a file too at your bench. Okay, you've watched me grind enough. Now I'm gonna go speed it up on the lathe real quick. Sorry, honey. I just, my fingers are burning. And I don't wanna spend the next 20 minutes. Carrie Donaldson could say, could you heat the aluminum and pour into the ingot mold you sell to use no. for a force? No. no? Your aluminum will become very brittle.
But if you wanted to do something like that with copper, sure. Safety glasses. So, yeah, fast. it's fast. So if you don't have a lathe, um, just use your belt sander and make it like a pencil. Okay? This, the deeper the design, the sharper the pencil. Anyone just joining us, Kevin's showing how to make a force out of aluminum, but you could also make it out of copper. Uh, and he showed how to do it. I would have made this out of copper had we had some copper. <laughs> I just didn't have any copper. I had some aluminum. So he showed it earlier on a, uh, a shallower die. Yep. And this one is for this face, which is pretty mm, deep. It's really deep. So You're going to want to put it in the nose. But we'll see what we get out of this. I'm trying to be quick about this because Daniel wants to go home. We've been here since 10, we were here till like 10 o'clock last night or something crazy. My good idea of having a yard sale, uh, I didn't realize how much junk we had. So you're going to put your metal in the die. You're not, you're not going to sit in front of it like I am right now because it could just land right in your face. Okay. <laughs> You're going to advance very slowly. You're not just going to go full send. Notice how I did it very gently and eased into it. If you go full send, you could launch it out of the die. So now that it's stuck in there, that's a good sign. That means I did a good job. Let me go put it in a vise. Let's go take it out. Sorry, honey, you gotta follow me. What grade aluminum are you using? 1100, 2024, 5052? Whatever it takes. I have no idea. It was random aluminum that was sitting in the uh, in a bin. Could you get an aluminum ball bearing to use for a force? They don't make aluminum ball bearings, I don't think. <laughs> so we're going to take that out using a big pair of pliers. If I had some. Need to label the drawers. Yep. Pair of vice grips. Not too bad. That was with one push without even annealing it. Here, I'll set it down so you can focus on it. Okay. If your camera would focus. Here, okay. let me have it. So, that was with our first push. And... I believe if I was to anneal it, there's a good chance we would get everything. So since everybody's watching, let's go ahead and anneal it. 
and press it one more time. As far as aluminum grades, the difference in aluminum has a lot, there's different alloys, but you're, you know, you're going to get 6061. That's pretty much the main alloy. And it is not critical on this, okay? McMaster car it, has aluminum ball bearings. I would, if you order aluminum ball bearings and have them overnighted to you <laughs> for $35 from McMaster car. <laughs> <laughs> this is all Carrie Donaldson. Is yeah. I, I order from McMaster car and I love McMaster car, but you're a maniac. I would use just a random piece of cut off rod. It would save you a lot of money. <laughs> Carrie said, just saying. They do exist. Like, we order from McMaster Car. If you guys don't know about McMaster Car, it is like the greatest company on earth. It makes Amazon look like amateurs. The only problem with McMaster Car is they're not really designed for the homeowner or the hobbyist. They are selling to industry. So if you need something, they absolutely do have it. 100% guaranteed they do have it. And it will be at your door next day, like 24 hours, it is delivered directly to your door. But for that luxury, you pay dearly, like you've never paid before. Our saw broke and we needed this special pulley so that we could keep cutting your, your uh, our steel pucks to make dies for you guys. And the manufacturer was months out and the local places, no one had it. I called McMaster Car and no bull. By nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, my pulley was at the door. And my wallet was, you, you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine how much you can pay for a pulley. But when you need a pulley, you will pay dearly. You know what, I'm not going to punch it. I'm just going to try to put it back in without burning myself. Well, Does what metal you're pressing uh, determine what you should use, copper or aluminum? I'm Like I said, I'm using aluminum strictly because I had it. I don't have any copper. Had I had a piece of copper? No, but if you're making copper stampings or no. silver or anything. No, I, w I would use copper. I would use copper. Don't use aluminum. You Use copper. I just don't have any. And I wanted to make No, that this wasn't video. the problem. She was just oh. asking if it made a difference which no. one you... No, it doesn't. ...use for it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I need to turn it around. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Did you miss it? Yes. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I see? don't know how to turn it around. Oh. I guess I'll turn it this way, but I can't see. Here, I see. can flip it. <laughs> uh, there it is. It's the button that flips it. Yeah, I didn't see it, obviously. Danielle's not a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, not a... Kevin is so good at technology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I have a Galaxy, and she has, like, an iPhone. So... It's stuffed in there. I bet you our impression is perfect. Let's go get it out. When I <laughs> when it turned on me, it's kind of like that old meme that was, you know, when you're at the hairdresser and you have the thing around your neck and they turn you around to look at the haircut and you look, <laughs> you look like a lizard <laughs> the shock of turning the phone like oh my god that's me there it is we got the whole thing wow perfect wonder what it is it is a it's a lovely <laughs> thing to grab it's, it's probably a it's odd yes it's odd it's an oddity. Anyway, so that's a really deep design. 
and there you go. So that's how you do it. Very easy and I think it'll change your lives. <laughs> Probably not. And you can, yes, you can re, thanks I didn't look like a lizard. And uh, you can use the pusher over and over. Yep. Right? Yep. So you can just store it with your die. Yep. Then even if you're just making one pressing, it'd make yeah. it easier. Just keep it. That way when you uh, need to stamp again, you can go back to it. And uh, when you go to press it, it's going to shrink because basically your metal is now the exact same size. As, so normally what you'd want to do, you could do this as well. You could lay a piece of copper in there, like thin copper, to give you clearance so that when you drive your force into it, it will give you the clearance for the metal. Because having an exact shape, like it's not a big deal on this die. Not critical at all having you could literally you don't need to have your compensate for the metal but something like this you'd kind of need to compensate for the metal so the one way to do that that would be easy is to take and polish this down just take and buff it down sit there with a little flex shaft and polish off the edges where it's going to pinch your metal so like the sides of the cheek here that's where it would bind it'll get stuck so I if I was mostly I'm not worried about the sides of the cheek I'm trying to get the detail in the face so what I would do is I would grind the sides of the face down a little bit just so that when I press this it doesn't pinch my metal you have to relieve the force and that's done by hand that is done by hand let me show you some forces that are done this way they look terrible but they're basically they're very functional so let's grab one right here, like this. Notice how there's very little detail, and it's it's not that great. It's a cool image, and I probably have this die somewhere. It's this uh, girl with this, I don't know, looks like a vulture dragon chicken thing, biting her shoulder. But you can see the uh, it's not it's not great. Everything's kind of kind of soft and washed out. Looks good to me. Yeah, it's not what too do bad. I, know? I don't know. You know enough. Okay, I like to press solid. So if I press solid with copper, I've made a presser. You've made a force. So if yeah, you're pressing force. solid, just ignore this. You're already doing this. If you're pressing solid, you're basically you don't need a force. You're already doing it. But if you're pressing sheet, this will help you. If you're pressing solid all the time, then just go on about your day. <laughs> you don't need to you don't need to watch this because you're already doing it. But as you guys have seen, when you press solid, you can get all your detail because you've got something heavy behind it. It's pushing all the metal right in. So anyone got questions before I leave? Uh, Nicole Ritchie said that uh, she's... Uh, I keep trying to find the Thanks thing. for the tacos. <laughs> yeah. Basically, she's uh, been trying to make a uh, formware, or like dishware or something like that, and she's been swearing, and she just noticed you're on. Oh, I'm raising copper dishes, and now I'm sweating my face off. Or swearing. <laughs> no, sweating my face off. Uh, so, Jessica, the video has been about how to make a force for impression dies uh, to be able to get better impressions better detail. yeah detail yeah so feel free to use copper like buy a copper rod buy aluminum rod brass kind of sucks it's just gonna crack um, I would stick with copper or aluminum they both work good they're cheap I just happen to have aluminum had I had copper I would have used it I even agonized a little bit about it because I was like, oh, they're all going to think you got to have aluminum and then they're going to like they're going to ask me about the grade when the reality is it doesn't matter. It's just it's nothing special. How do you keep them in line to line them up correctly? That is where you would have to do urethane first so that you have so let's do one. Let's do a piece of something here. Uh, let me find something that's not so crazy thick. Here we go. 
It's crazy thick, but oh well. Oh, I got something. Check this out. We're just going to use one of these. A little drop that's been sitting here. I'm going to put spacers in my press. Let's do it. Spacers are your friends. You should be using them all the time. Alright, so here's the start of it. I'm going to use this little glob of torn up urethane. This is what we're going to start with. Just balancing my urethane on top. There it is. We're not even going to take it out. Just going to set this on top. Actually, let's go ahead and pull it out. That way you can, let's see if it makes any difference. I'm not going to sit and anneal this thing. Because my wife's in a hurry. Because <laughs> I struggle. Heck. This may not have been the greatest example, but. Oh. <laughs> So let's take a look. Things are a little soft. The edges, it's not too bad though. It's not bad for just yeah. jamming it one time. It's All right. Deep. Yeah. So I'm going to put it back in there. I'm not even going to anneal. We're going to go at it with our force. Put the force in there. Make sure that it's aligned. Let's see if we get an improvement. Oh yeah. And notice my force conformed to the back. Notice how all the detail gets blasted away, but it's not important. Now my force is perfect. So let's take a look at what kind of detail we got. Wow. Perfect. Wow, that is nice. Yep. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. And that was not even annealing. This is 16 gauge that I used. So it's not too bad. Here's my force. And it's good to go for the next one. So use your urethane first. If, if you annealed, it would even be better, but I was just being lazy today. But, uh, and my press is set for 12 tons, okay? This press is set for 12 tons. It'll, it'll, obviously it'll go to 20, but it is set to 12. And it's technique. Because if, if tw what is it, 12 tons is 24,000 pounds. So if 24,000 pounds will not push a piece of copper into a die nothing will i mean so people who are thinking they need 50 tons 100 tons that's insanity you're just pressing a little thin piece of metal you 12 is overkill 12 is overkill for this it's technique and uh you know i pressed it a few times and turning it just to make sure everything was level and everything so yeah i'd even cut it did a nice job though. Did you get a nice close up? No, it's let, let me show you how to, again. Let me show you how to operate my phone. It's still blurry. There we go. Great. Perfect detail. Yeah. I think it's about as good as it could get. Uh, what PSI is 12 tons? About a thousand. 1500 psi yeah about a thousand 1200 psi right in there okay it's about all you need but if if you want to go to 2500 psi feel free feel free 
not a big deal. But I was mostly saying that for people who don't have... Now, that being said, this is an electric press. If 12 tons on a bottle jack is going to be right around five or 6,000 PSI, okay? Because it's different. This is a much larger cylinder, and it's, it's a different system. Still hydraulic, but it's different equations and numbers. But on, on an electric press, 1,000 to 1,200 PSI is going to get you to... 12 tons okay so but you don't even need the don't even agonize about the gauge just you don't have to go nuts this doesn't take a lot of pressure it really doesn't these things were made like little pieces like this were made in screw presses like these over here let me show you these are only like two and three tons this is two tons this is this big monster is three tons of pressure. That's all it produces. You guys, those of you guys who struggle with the bottle jack, you guys would be hating this thing. This thing's a monster. But yeah, you gotta crank that thing down and it only produces three tons at maximum, like just wailing on it. So these are, these will do it, all right? We got good. We have good light in here. Take a look. That's a dandy. Yeah, it worked this time. Mm -hmm. Here's what the back looks like. Just like a machine made it. So that's it, guys. That's how you make an aluminum force. But you can use copper. Feel free. Copper will work just fine. Be easier. Wow, I really cut it. Look at that. It peeled it right away. <laughs> I know everyone's going, I'm going to do that. And then I don't have to saw. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it just peeled away. Not too shabby. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Take it easy. Bye.